Hi guys, um, welcome to another Creative Tab tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at the pre-multi node in Nuke, and we're going to be understanding exactly what a pre-multiply or pre-multi node does, and wh when we use it, and what actually goes on within the node. Okay, so we're going to work through these various examples that I've got for you today. So hopefully by the time we work through them all, it just shows it working in different ways. By the time we've gone through them all, you should have a solid understanding of what exactly this pre melt node is doing. Okay, so first of all, just going to give a quick explanation. Um, pre melt node. If you think of it, if you think of it as in pre multiplication, basically what happens is your RGB values of an image are multiplied by the values of an alpha. So when we have a look at this example now, this is going to start making some sense. So if we kind of have a look at my first example, what we've got here is, first of all, we've got a color bars node, okay? And if we look at this color bars node, these little colors along the bottom, which you'll see in many different nodes, so if we come to our footage node over here, we've got red, green, blue, and then we've got a white. However, in this node, we've just got red, green, and blue. What that means is, within this image, um, you'll see as I hover my mouse over, you'll see these digits come up down here. What that's telling us is there's red channel information, there's green channel information, and there's blue channel information, okay? So if I, for example, hold Control, and let's just turn our overlay on. If I hold Control and Shift and drag, it's selecting this color green, and it shows there's 0.5 um, in the green channel, 0, there's no blue information, there's no red information, and there's no alpha. If I come to the magenta, we've got 0.5 in the red, 0.5 in the blue, nothing in the green, and nothing in the alpha. Okay. Basically, this node, this input node, only carries red, green, and blue channel data. Now, if you, if you don't understand channels, RGBA and alpha, oh, sorry, RGBA, which is red, green, blue, and alpha, I have got another video which I'll link down in the description or something, or it's on my channel. Um, so go and check that out. If you do understand uh, RGB and A, then great. Um, let's move on. <laughs> so what I've got then over here, so we're viewing our color bars. What I've got over here is a constant node which own, is only inputting alpha okay so you can change this from RGBA to alpha and then I've got a radial so it's you in the alpha channel if we hit A you'll see we've changed the alpha up here um, we've got this alpha okay it's also in all, all the color channels but it doesn't really matter with that for now um, so what's happening by here is I'm copying so if we click on the copy node I'm copying the alpha from pipe A down into the B into the B in, into the B pipe. Okay, so this is my this this is the if we look at the radial, I've generated this circular alpha channel which fades out as we go to the edges, and I'm copying this alpha channel because you'll see only got RGB data in this node. As soon as we get down to here, we've got RGB and A because it's taking the alpha information from here and copying it down into our B stream. So that's what we got. We got our color bars. Let's come back to RGB color bars, and then we're copying this in. Now, when we pre-multiply, we view the pre-multiply node. Look what happens. You may have seen, you may have done work similar to this before. It's basically the easiest way of explaining it, and I will explain it in a more in-depth way. Um, but the easier way of explaining it for now is it's like a cookie cutter. It uses your alpha channel and it stamps out. Basically, the RGB, it stamps out the RGB, the color channel data, with this alpha channel. Okay, so if you've used track mats before in After Effects, it's it's like that. But I'm actually going to explain to you exactly what is happening. Like I told you earlier, going back to this, pre-multiply, so it multiplies, a pre-melt node multiplies your RGB, your red, your green, and your blue data by the alpha. Okay, so let's come on a let's Viewing, viewing this, if we look at our alpha channel by hitting A, remember our alpha is basically just coming in from here. If we control click, what we're doing is we're basically taking information from, we're basically sourcing channel information, okay? If we look at the alpha, so we're sourcing this bit, there's one in the alpha, so it goes from zero to one. Again, if you don't understand channels, uh, go and have a look at the RGBA video, RGBA explained. Um, but it's got 
full alpha in there. Now, if we s select out here, it's got zero in the alpha channel, so there's no information where there's, there's you know, solid information there. As we get to the edge, we got 0 0.2, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select this area by here, where we're one in the alpha. Now let's come back and let's hit A key, and let's have a look at our color bars, because remember this is coming down. What we've got is zero in the red channel, five in, 0 0.5, sorry, in the green channel, and zero in the blue channel. So what is gonna happen is what's happening down here is we're multiplying 0, 0, 0. 0.000 by 1, which is 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, 0. 0.5, we're multiplying by 1 of the alpha, because there's 1 in the alpha, and that turns out as 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5 times 1 is 0. 0.5. Same with the blue channel. There's no blue information in this green strip, so that's 0. Multiplied by 1 is still 0. Okay. Now, let's have a look. If we go back here, source the green up here, okay? So still zero in the red, 0 0.5 in the green, zero in the blue. Um, but if we come down to our pre-melt, remember there's zero, so if we go to the alpha channel, there is zero alpha information up here. So the reason, right, that the, the green isn't showing up by here, because our pre-multiply node is, pre -multi is multiplying 0 0.5 in the green channel, this 0 0.5 here, and it's multiplying it by zero from the alpha channel. So 0 0.5 times by zero is zero, okay? Um, so that is exactly what's happening, and that's why it's not showing through. So this 0 0.5 times by this zero, so this 0 0.5 here, when it's coming down the stream, times by the zero in the alpha, it's not showing up. So to illustrate that just a little bit further, let's go into the sort of, so if I just click, control click, it's just going to source this point. So we've got 0 0.5 in red. So you can see it's just sourcing that little point by there, uh, one pixel. 0 0.5 in red, nothing in the green, 0 0.5 in the blue. Let's come down, okay? Because in our alpha channel, our alpha has got a value of 0 0.29. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you why we've got 0 0.14 here. I'm going to open up my calculator, okay? So get this calculator open, right. So if we go back up here, in the red we got 0 0.5, in the blue we got 0 0.5. But down here they're 0 0.14 because they're being multiplied by 0 0.29. So if I go 0 0.5 times by, so multiplied, so our colors, our color channel of 0 0.5 from here, multiplied by the 0 0.29 from the incoming alpha, times by 0.29 or and then 419 is going to equal 0 0.14709 and it does that for both of them because both these values red and blue further up the stream are 0 0.5 and that is exactly what's happening okay um, so that is basically pre-multiplication in a nutshell I'm going to show you some other kind of examples though um, example 2 is basically the same stream as we've got earlier. So if we just view at the pre-melt, it's the same exact thing as we've got earlier over here, but I'm just showing you then for compositing, you pre-melt beforehand because then you can composite whatever you've got with that alpha on top of an image. I'm just using a checkerboard for this, but it's showing you that it blend, it's got that nice blend. If I didn't pre-multiply, look, look what's going on. Basically, you've got the alpha still there, but it's not using it, the colors are still showing up here because the color data, the RGB, is still getting, is still in this over operation, it's getting overed the checkerboard. You need to use this pre-melt node just to use that cookie cutter. Otherwise, if you even if you create your alpha and bring it across, it'll work for there, but all the color data is still here, so you need to pre-melt apply, so you get rid of that. Essentially, like a cookie cutter, okay? So coming across to example three, just to show you this in different circumstances, um, and this is quite an interesting one actually. Um, in terms of rotoscoping, because you know rotoscoping is a big part, especially when you're starting out in Nuke. Um, in terms of rotoscoping, this is where your pre-melt comes in handy. So again, we've got our checkerboard, and it comes in with RGB and alpha data. So if we view the alpha channel, 
this checkerboard, right? It's already got its own alpha channel. Now we come down into the roto, and what I've done, if I double click the roto, I've just drawn this circle, okay? Um, and if I view the alpha channel, because our output for the roto is alpha, um, so we've got it there. The only reason, okay, so we've got our alpha coming in here, which is a full alpha, and then we draw another one. But you're thinking, where's the rest of the alpha gone? What I've done within this roto, which I think this is a bad example, I don't think this isn't the best way to work, and I'll explain why later. I've got the place ticked, okay, so if I don't have a place ticked, it'll just draw an alpha circle on top of your alpha coming in from the checkerboard. But I've gone with a place. What I've done then is I've just blurred, just, just to kind of play around with it a bit more, I've got a blur node which is blurring only the alpha channel, not the color channels. So it's channels is alpha, and then I pre-multiplied it. So this alpha channel pre-multiplied with the color information which is coming down from the checkerboard, and that's what we've got. Now, I want to show you this because this by here on the right is doing the exact same thing, right? But it's doing it in a better way. We've got our checkerboard coming in. Let's get rid of these nodes. We've got our checkerboard coming in with a full alpha. Then I've got this remove node because basically, you know the roto over here, I was replacing the alpha that because we already started with an alpha and then I just drew a roto and I just clicked replace. If you were to give this to another compositor or another artist, they 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 don't want to have to go into every single node just to check kind of what's ticked and what's going on and how this is working. Now what we've done here is basically we've done the same thing as this rotor is doing by just replacing the alpha, but we're doing it with extra nodes so people can actually see what's going on, right? And this is a very good way to work. So let's get rid of this. We've got our checkerboard coming in. It's got a full alpha. We're then going remove I've got a remove node and I said remove the alpha channel so now it's got no alpha channel we've then made so we've then made our circular roto and we didn't need to click replace because this remove node is removing the alpha channel and then we're just creating a new one instead of clicking replace okay and I've done the same I've blurred the alpha and I pre-multiplied it and it's doing the same exact thing um, so yeah they've got a different fall off on them they've got different settings but it does the same thing so instead of going into here and clicking replace best call of practice is just to kind of remove the alpha um okay finally i'm going to show you this example with some footage okay so we're nearing the end now um i imported this image of a guy um it's from pexels just a free website reformatted it and sort of transformed it don't worry about that and then I drew a roto around him. So let's have a look at the alpha channel. Drew a roto around him. I've actually contradicted myself because I've used the replace method here instead of removing the alpha further up. I could have done that. So if I get this remove node. See, I tell you one thing and I do another. Put up a here where we're removing the alpha and then I don't need to do replace. <laughs> okay. Um, and basically, I'm going to turn this pre-melt off because you know what this pre-melt is going to do. It's now going to use this as a cookie cutter to cut out the guy. If we didn't do that, we've got an alpha channel in there, but it's not doing anything. It's not cutting him out from the background. And when I go to merge him over, um, this is what it should look like with a pre-melt. But all this, all this sort of bo bokeh, like from the image, this sort of in color information, because all we've done, if we don't pre-melt, all we've actually done is if I turn this rotor off as well, it's but it's it's cutting it's cutting him out and making him more clear because we've given it an alpha channel. But the color data, the red, the green, and the blue data, is still being overed with this merge over this background. That's not good. So what we want to do because there's still color information on the outside. So this rotor, yeah, it makes him more clear. But by using so. Obviously, we've still got color data on the outside. As soon as we turn this pre-melt on, it's now using that alpha channel. So alpha channel zero here, so it multiplies them by zero, and they get, so they don't come through, really. So just by using this pre-melt node, you are probably doing a cutout of him. And then you've got your better comp, okay? Obviously, you know, I could do other stuff like... I haven't actually comped him in there, I've literally just bashed two images together. But that is your pre-multiplication node explained. So like I said, you've got your color information coming down, uh, down, and then that is when you get your alpha channel copied over or however, if it's done with a roto, 
however it's in the stream when you use your pre-malt uses it as a cookie cutter so where the alpha is one it times as the red green and the blue information by one where it's zero there's no alpha it multiplies as multiplies those values by zero and then anywhere in between was like 0.3 alpha whatever so um i hope you guys kind of understood that hope it hope it helped a lot um if you are unfamiliar with channels check out um our video on rgba and how to understand rgba within nuke um, but yeah hope you guys enjoyed and found that useful cheers for tuning in